gentlemen, my next guest is the Republican senator from Arizona who is not John McCain. Please welcome Senator Jeff Flake. Hey, Senator, thanks for coming. Come on out here. Uh, nice to have you on. It, that is how I'm usually introduced, the other senator from Arizona. <laughs> now, uh, the, uh, I was telling the people uh, earlier here uh, that you have taken a pretty bold uh, stance. You've been openly critical of uh, President Trump. Uh, you've got a new book uh, called The Conscience of a Conservative uh, that we'll get to in, in, in just a moment in which you're openly critical of him. But first, I'd like to know a little bit about you. Like, what, what was your... What's your life been like? Where did, did you grow up in Arizona? I did. I'm actually a fifth-generation Arizonan. Okay. And I understand <laughs> you're from a big family. I, uh... I grew up in the town of Snowflake, Arizona. Snowflake? Snowflake. Is there a lot of <laughs> snow in Arizona? <laughs> there are a lot of flakes, including my family. <laughs> my... Is it named? For yes, you? it is. It is. Wait, my... the town. But your name's not Jeff Snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> my great great grandfather in 1878 uh, was sent to Arizona by Brigham Young to mm -hmm. colonize uh, the state, and uh, he founded this small town. He, he was going back up to Utah to get the cattle that he had to mm -hmm. pay for. The, the, the valley that he bought, and he ran into Erastus Snow, who was a Mormon apostle who was kind uh -huh. of over the colonization, and he asked my great-great-grandfather, have you named the town? He said, no. He said, call it Snowflake for the two of us. And oh, he did. No. So you grew I, up in that town? I did, and I, I grew up not knowing that flake was a pejorative term. And nobody made fun of us there. It was... <laughs> Let's talk about uh, this Graham Cassidy bill, okay? Right. You are known uh, generally as like your your uh, reasonable bipartisan. Right. The right. Democrats want a full CBO score. Right. Why not wait to know what you're voting on before you affect one sixth of the American economy? Well, let me see. Let me say, I want a bipartisan solution. Part of the problem with Obamacare is that it was pushed through by one party. I understand that. And we're going to have the same kind of problem if we just do this long term. But in the meantime, there are 200,000 Arizonans who will wake up this morning or tomorrow morning without health care. They've paid the fine to the federal government because they don't have care. Mm -hmm. And they still can't afford insurance. 80% of them make less than $50,000 a year. Why not fix so, what we have in Obamacare rather than to blow up the bill we have right now no, for this, something that's a question? Well, this is... I don't, I don't think this is a matter... This isn't a matter of blowing up the system. Mm -hmm. It's letting those at the local level run it better. And, and I think that that can be the case. If you look back in 1996, we did welfare reform. And the hue and cry from everyone out there is there'll be people dying on the streets and it'll never work. The governors will take it over. It'll be a race to the bottom. And that wasn't the case at all. Uh, in fact, it worked very successfully. Uh, Health care is more difficult, admittedly, than uh, You're welfare literally reform. dealing with people who could yeah, die. Yeah, you bet. It's but, a, it's but, a, I, totally but, but what I'm telling you now is the exchange in Arizona, people who aren't on Medicaid, who are buying on the exchange, it's ground zero for the failure of the exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, in, there are 15 counties in Arizona. In all 15 counties, if you can afford a policy on the exchange, you're paying more for your premium than you are for your mortgage. In every county, in a couple of counties, you're paying double. And then with the co-pays and deductibles that are so high, it's as if you don't even have insurance. Here's the thing that, that strikes me, is that when I think about the objective of Obamacare, it was to provide as much health care to everybody as you could. When I hear about the arguments over taking Obamacare away, right. Often, there are ideological arguments about the role of government. So the goal is over an ideo ideological difference, not getting health care to the most people you right. can. I, I think that's the goal. That's, that's certainly the goal that we, all of us have, okay. Republicans and Democrats. Mm -hmm. there, I, I, I mean, everybody wants that. Most people covered Not everybody wants that. Set. Not everybody wants that because, you know, as... Trump's advisor, Stephen Moore, said people want health care for their own family, not somebody else's family, right. but that's how insurance works. Well, I, I and, think... And, like, the, the, the idea of a risk pool, which is what right. Obamacare is, is what insurance is. Why, why, why not just fix the risk pool as exists rather than calling all the money back in, yep. resplitting it up, taking money from New York and Massachusetts and California and, and uh, the other states that Lindsey Graham well, named, yeah. and then redistributing them in block grants that can be used in ways that are not guaranteed 
well, by uh, the federal granters. Let me just say, and the, with the Medicaid right now, <laughs> the, those five states that were named by Lindsey Graham, yeah. California, Massachusetts, uh, uh, New York, yeah. and Maryland, 40% yeah. of Medicaid spending goes to those four states. And if you're in one of the other states, yeah. you'd say that's hardly fair. Well, they're high and population not. states who no, put a lot of no, money into the okay. federal Well, the let's, No, no, it's not that simple. If you take I'm sure it's not. I'm sure yeah. it's not that simple. Pens Pennsylvania, right next door to Massachusetts, covers twice as many people with, I think, one-third fewer dollars. And so, and Arizona covers a lot of people very efficiently. Uh, New York, not so much. And so part of the reason that we want to push these, this down to the governor's level and the state legislatures is they usually do things more efficiently and better, uh, as was the case with welfare reform, than the federal government does. Do you think you guys are going to pass this? Because you already I have do. several senators who are publicly opposed to it, and you can only lose two. Right. Uh, and it, it's going to come down to the final few senators. I, I hope we can. Like I said, people in Arizona are hurting, and that's who I'm responding to. Uh, we've got to fix it in a bipartisan way going forward, obviously. It, it is never good for one party to push something through on its own. Uh, in the meantime, we've got to make sure that uh, everybody has insurance. Well, in, in, in the book, uh, The Conscience of a Conservative, uh, which is a, uh, a hat tip to a uh, great uh, senator from Arizona, Barry Goldwater's right. Conscience of a Conservative from the 1960s, right. um, you say that the GOP is in a race to the bottom to see who can be meaner, madder, and crazier. Were you ever part of that problem? <laughs> you know, as far as the meaner matter and crazier, I, I like to think no. I mean, we've, it, <laughs> it, it seems, that, you know, the, all the incentives out there uh, kind of reward those who yell the loudest. And, and I've never been one of those, but, the uh, but I do have my... The the same thing. Yeah, it does, it does. And the way that districts are gerrymandered and everything else have, has lent to that. Uh, but all of us have regrets. Uh, what are some of yours? Well, one I mentioned in the book that uh, during the TARP vote, the Troubled Assets Assistance Program, where in 2008 we had to fix it overnight. And uh, the House voted no, and the stock market dropped 700 points within a couple of hours. I was one of those who voted no. Um, Why did you then, vote no at the time? Well, at the time, I, my feeling was I didn't contribute to this, and I hadn't. I, I wasn't the one that racked up all the debt, or I didn't... Uh, uh, you know, work on the regulation that may have allowed this. And so I justified it myself for saying, I don't need to fix this, we'll let somebody else. And then we had another vote. And I voted no as well when I should have voted yes. Well, that's a and very it, interesting, it, and, and you regret that, which is interesting. I do, I do. Because that's an I, interesting I, philosophy because that gets back to the people only want to insure them their own family, not somebody else's. <laughs> no, I think... <laughs> that may be the case with one family or another, but if you're an elected official and you want to be re-elected, uh, then certainly you're going to care for who has insurance and who doesn't. Now you've and opposed so Trump. Do you think that's going to affect your re-election chances? Because he yeah. takes it seriously and he has promised to put in $10 million of his own money to defeat you. Is that a plus or a minus given his popularity? <laughs> it's, no, <laughs> it's, it's never a plus. And uh, I, let me just say, um, my bosses are 7 million people in Arizona. That's who I answer to. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with the president on some things. I have profound differences on others, just mm -hmm. like I did with a Democratic president and another Republican president. But uh, I answer to the people of Arizona, and, uh, and Arizona tends to elect independent-minded senators, <laughs> Barry Goldwater, John McCain. And so I, I like my chances. Well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate <laughs> you talking to me and thank explaining you. the rationale beside, behind your decision. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. The book... Conscience of a Conservative is available now. Senator Jeff Flake, everybody. We'll be right back with a performance by Miguel.